So we had that equivalence relations were relations, i.e. subsets of the Cartesian product, that had to be reflexive, every element related to itself, symmetric, if A is related to B, then B is related to C, and transitive, if A is related to B and B is related to C, then A is related to C. So I want to kind of focus on different relations and which of those properties they do or don't satisfy, and thus also whether they're equivalence relations, but also to kind of isolate how you could have certain properties satisfied and not others. Okay, uh, so these are examples, um, and this is for A equals Z, so these are relations on the integers. So here's the first one. So let's, let's focus in on equality. Now we want that this is an equivalence relation because this is what we're supposed to be generalizing, right? So equality is, so we have it's reflexive. Right, we always have that A is equal to itself for all integers. Uh, it is symmetric. It is symmetric, so A equals B implies B equals A for all integers A and B, and it is transitive right, of A is equal to B and B is equal to C implies A equals C for all A, B, C in the integers. right? Okay, so equality is an equivalence relation. And we emphasize um, to be an equivalence relation, it had to satisfy all three properties. It had to be a relation satisfying all three properties. Okay, and then in order to show that it's not an equivalence relation, we just need that one of those breaks down. Okay, um, so let's look at, uh, uh, sorry, let's look at less than or equal to. So, so less than or equal to is, okay, so now let's kind of go through. So this is, so let's look at it. Um, it is reflexive, right, because A is less than or equal to A for all integers. Okay. But it's not symmetric. So this is a good example of not being symmetric because one is less than or equal to two, but two is not less than or equal to one. Okay? Now this is enough to show that it's not an equivalence relation. Um, so only need, okay, so we only need, so first off, so we only need One example to show a property fails, right? So I only needed one and two. Okay, and then also I only need one of those three properties to fail in order for it to not be a relation to not be equivalence relation. So, less than or equal is not an equivalence relation right we only needed
one of E1 through E3 to fail. So E, sorry. One of E R1 through E R3, like one of symmetry, reflexivity, transitivity to fail. Um, okay. And it's important that we only needed one because note that actually transitivity holds. Because A is less than or equal to B, and B is less than or equal to C, implies A is less than or equal to C for all integers, A, B, C. Okay? But that wasn't enough. It wasn't enough that it was both reflexive and transitive. All that had to happen was that one of those three, namely symmetry, failed. And all that it took to show that symmetry failed was a single counterexample. Okay? Which is all we had to show. Okay? Um, and then finally, so my third example. Just to make sure I have plenty of room for this, so I'll do my third example down here. So less than is, okay, so we'll go through. So it's not reflexive. Okay, uh, the example is one is not less than one. But actually, it's never reflexive. You wouldn't need that it's never reflexive. Uh, but uh, in this case, uh, for no element do we uh, have that it is related to itself. Okay, it's not symmetric. Uh, for example, 1 is less than 2, but 2 is not less than 1. Okay? Um, it is transitive. So less than is transitive. Because if we have A is less than B, and B is less than C, then A is less than C for all integers A, B, C. So this is not an equivalence relation. But we kind of went overboard. We had two that failed. OK, so you can kind of see how different properties do or don't fail. In order to prove something's an equivalence relation, you're actually going to have to prove reflexivity, symmetry, and transitivity, um, as long as you already know that it's a relation, but usually that's kind of straightforward.